Now let's just go through the basic steps that happen when you turn the furnace on that calls for heat. We gotta make sure the power's on and the thermostat has to be calling for heat. The inducer fan will start spinning to ventilate the firebox and get rid of any carbon monoxide or build up gas. Then the vacuum switch will sense that there's a vacuum inside and make contact between these two terminals causing power to flow through to the igniter. The igniter will start to glow, the gas valve will open, and ignition will occur. Now you have a running furnace. If the igniter doesn't start to glow, then you have a bad igniter. As you can see, the igniter starts to cool down and go dark as it finishes its job. I ended up having a bad inducer motor. Listen to how it grinds. It would occasionally stop and freeze up and not spin, causing the cycle to not complete. I was able to free up the inducer by spinning it round and round, backward and forward, and spraying a little bit of white lithium grease onto the shaft by putting it through the little grooves here in the fan and spraying it toward the bearing. And it got it running again. It ran for a week with no problems. I did the same thing about a year ago and got a year's worth of work out of it and decided now it was finally time to change because I didn't want it failing again in an inopportune time. This is a really straightforward job. It's pretty easy. All quarter inch screws. Remove that one there that holds the vacuum sensor in place and pull the vacuum sensor out and away. That'll give you access to the mounting bolts for the inducer fan. If we look inside, we can see once you've got the fan assembly loosened, rubber mounting tabs that are like shock absorbers on the inducer. Okay, let me show you. You don't need to actually remove those, loosened, although it makes it a little bit easier around. to get the that screws out if you do. If you look off to the side behind hold the those cage rubber shock mounts, to the housing, there are three screws are that screw behind into yeah, the firebox be and hold here. the entire assembly in place. I went ahead and removed the three vibration mount screws so I could spin this plate around, make it easy for you to see where the mounting screws are. And there's one right there. Like I say, you can reach it without taking the mount screws off, but it's easier if you do. And there's a mounting screw underneath or right near each of the three shock mount screws. Once you get those out, you can lift the motor up a little bit, wiggle it, and pull it out directly toward you, and the whole motor assembly with the inner fan blade will pull out. The bottom one's easy to find because the green ground wire goes to it. You can just trace that green ground wire down around, and that goes to the bottom one. The top right one's a little trickier, but you can see it's right up there at about the 1 o'clock position. Once all those are loose, we should be able to just take the fan assembly and pull it out. Once you've got the assembly up on the workbench, you need to use a 8th inch Allen wrench to release the set screw that holds the fan to the shaft. Unfortunately, the vast majority of the time, these are going to be almost welded on there. We tried heating it, we tried pushing on it with a pry bar, we couldn't get it off. And that's why I purchased an extra fan wheel ahead of time in case I had to use the hacksaw and cut the shaft off, which is what we did here in this case. We're going to be replacing the motor anyway, so I went ahead and paid the 34 bucks for a new fan blade that will just clip right on. The three screws closest to the red rubber insulator need to come out. We'll have to take those out in order to mount the inducer here to this metal plate. We've installed the three self-tapping screws that hold the motor to the fan plate. And now we're going to install the fan itself. All right, we've replaced the fan. We've lined it up so that the shaft is even with the top of the fan housing inside. Tightened up the Allen screw using this access hole here on the side. Now we're going to flip it over and install the other side of the inducer fan, the actual plastic fan blade. I bought a new one just to have in case something got broke. And that was like $14, I believe. But well, I don't think we're going to need it because looking at the old one here, there doesn't appear to be anything wrong with it. I also bought a replacement push clip for the center in case we didn't need the fan. So I'm just going to go ahead and install the old fan blade and a new push clip. The best way to install these locking ring 
or push clip we'll call it, or is to ring. retain clip is to use a socket just about the same size as the ring, set it in place, and then push down until it seats. And you can see the clips are right in place where they belong to hold everything together. This shaft that goes through here has bearings on each side, and those are what I think went bad to cause it to start grinding and seizing up. I was able to grease the front one with white lithium grease without taking anything apart. I could have pulled it all apart and greased the back bearing through this spot here, but they are sealed bearings, so the grease is only going to work for a little bit of time. It already failed once about a year ago, so I figured it was time to replace it, but honestly, it's really not worth the effort. Just spend the money and get a new motor. Oops, got a new seal. That's $9.00. There's nothing tricky about putting it all back together. It's just the reverse of how you took it out. Make sure all your hoses and wires are connected properly. Here's the parts I used to fix this with. If you want to go the cheapest way possible, Amazon has great prices on aftermarket inducer motors and blade kits. But RepairClinic.com has a way better selection and a built-in parts lookup catalog to help find and make sure you get the right parts. I recommend them. I did this. It just took me a couple hours to get it done. And I'm pretty sure you could do it too. Because I'm not really a heating and cooling guy. But with a little, you know, internet research and some testing of the components, it's not that bad. You could do it. Save yourself several hundred dollars by making this kind of repair yourself. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. And see you soon.